We say goodbye to big solar flares and hello to Martian dust storms as we check in on the red planet. Those stories are more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week calms down quite a bit, but there's still a little bit of activity. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, you can see back on the 24th, old region 3062 fires off a solar storm. You can actually watch the blast wave ripple up to the north a little bit. This solar storm is not Earth-directed. It's actually going to the east of Earth, but we're probably feeling a little bit of an impact from it right now, and we'll uh, feel a bit of that graze over the next day or so, which could bump up activity just a tiny bit, but probably not enough to bring us some significant aurora. But that's not the only story. On the 26th, you can see old region 3060 firing off a near M-class flare. This is kind of a goodbye kiss before this region rotates to the sun's far side. But since then, we really have been uh, pretty clear when it comes to big flares. Our big flare risk has dropped way down, and we only have three active regions on the Earth-facing disk. But there is still a chance for more activity. You can see this big uh, coronal hole here in the south. And as we flip to our uh, far-sided sun, you can actually see it a little bit better. This is stereo A, and it's looking at the sun a little bit from the side. You can see that big coronal hole kind of rotating across the center disk here in stereo's view. And that's going to bring us some solar storming probably in about Oh, five or six days, maybe a week's time, and that could give us a decent amount of aurora, possibly down to mid-latitudes. And then as you look past that, you can actually see on the east limb of the sun, in stereo's view, we do have more active regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view, and that's great news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. It's going to boost that solar flux back up, because believe it or not, we've actually tanked back into the high 90s, and we need to get back up into triple digits to keep the radio propagation on Earth side in the good range. And now for your Martian Minute. It's been a while since we checked in at the Red Planet, and in the Northern Hemisphere, it's autumn, and that means dust storm season. Sadly, this is not good news for our InSight lander that is already feeling the power crunch because its solar panels over time have gotten more and more laden with dust. In fact, it looks like poor InSight is not going to be able to last much longer possibly through the end of December before its power levels get so low it won't be able to transmit anymore. But at least that's not before it managed to measure the magnitude 5 monster quake on Mars back in May. But sadly, that may be the last insight that this endearing mission will give us. As we switch to our dust maps, we can see we're getting dust ups getting a bit more prevalent, especially starting around April, where we can see the a regional dust storm in the area of Tharsis Montes, and actually as it even moves to the east down to Valles Marineris in the beginning of May. We also got dust ups as we started to get into June. We had local dust ups even in near Gale Crater, where Curiosity Rover is, and also with Insight, and that's not good news. However, that dust storm did manage to kind of quiet back down. We didn't get the big regional dust storms. That moved back to the Tharsis Montes and the Deodalia area, and it's kind of staying in that regional area and not bothering our poor little rovers and landers over on the west. And the other nice thing is that up at Jezero Crater, where we've got Perseverance Rover and Ingenuity Helicopter, the dust storms aren't affecting us much there either. And at Gale Crater right now, where Curiosity Rover is, we've got sunny skies with a high of zero degrees and a low of minus 69. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter. And by the fourth, the moon will still be only about 40% illuminated. So, Night Sky Watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, now is a perfect chance. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we actually have two solar storms, one that's moving to the east of us and then another one that's been launched to the west of us. These are going to be impacting us easily over this next week, along with some fast wind from a big coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, which gives us kind of an unsettled conditions overall. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled to possibly active conditions, especially in and around the 31st, where we could really see that 
that storm from the west actually kind of give us some decent wake along with that fast solar wind. NOAA is giving us up to about a 50% chance of major storm conditions at around that time. But is this these conditions could easily continue sporadically through the first week in August. Now at uh, mid-latitudes, we're looking at this kind of the same thing. We're looking at unsettled conditions mainly, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm. And again, that's around the 31st, but you know, in through that first week of August, just kind of expect things to continue to be unsettled because we have all of these like waves of activity that are coming through. But it's not really the greatest for Aurora showing, so only if you're dedicated should you really chase. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, with Region 3060, the last of the big flare players rotating safely behind the sun's west limb, we are back in the green when it comes to big flares. There are no big flare players left on the Earth-facing disk, and that should make GPS users very happy, as we basically have no risk for big radio blackouts on Earth's day side. But sadly, with that means that the solar flux has also tanked, we are now sitting in the low to mid 90s and that means amateur radio operators and emergency responders we are back to the marginal range for radio propagation on earth's day side and sadly that is going to continue easily through the end of the month into the beginning of August before things begin to kind of climb back out. And it may be well into next week before we see triple digits again. And that's because it's gonna take a little while for some of those new regions that we're beginning to see entering stereo's field of view to enter Earth's field of view. And that will actually start boosting that solar flux up again. So just kind of hang in there. And now, because we are uh, really not expecting any radiation storms right now, we are all in the green. We're back in the D1 normal range, so this means frequent flyers, including high-risk passengers and flight crew and anyone who happens to fly uh, at 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you don't have any worry. Everything looks to be in the clear. So the space weather this week is definitely settled down compared to last week, but we have a little bit of unsettled activity going on. We do have a solar storm that's launched to the east of us and now another one that's been launched to the west of us. And that means activity is going to come in kind of these weak waves from the wake of these solar storms as they pass by. On top of that, we also have that coronal hole that's gonna be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. And it's gonna give us more kind of waves of fast solar wind that are gonna be a bit on the weak side. So roar photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could get some decent shows on and off throughout this week. If you're at mid latitudes though, wow, it's going to be a lot harder for you to get a chance to see any aurora. Things are going to be sporadic at best. And we might need to wait until really the early part of August before we really start seeing uh, chances for, for aurora coming down to mid latitudes. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the nice thing is that radio blackouts are gone for the, you know, foreseeable future, at least until probably two weeks from now. The bad thing, of course, is that that means that solar flux is now tanked into the mid to low 90s, and that means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. So just kind of hang in there and, and deal with it, because I promise you there's big regions will be coming back here soon. And now GPS users, well, you've actually got the best news of the lot because we don't have a, a lot of heavy solar storms coming. You don't have to worry about things on the night side. And now because solar flux has uh, kind of dived down a little bit, you don't have to worry about either radio blackouts or big issues at low latitudes. So pretty much all over the globe, your GPS reception should be top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.